Welcome to table for 92, element number two, helium. It's number two because it has exactly two protons within its nucleus. For helium, we're cooking up the classic British dish, fish and chips. In all honesty, this has very little to do with helium itself because helium isn't found in foods. It's like all the other noble gases. Helium doesn't really bind with other elements. They're noble. They don't bind with all the other peasant elements like phosphorus. But it is used in food packaging sometimes. Helium is fairly expensive and it seems to only be used in leak detention. But alas, those most responsible for the discovery of helium all hailed from the great Great Britain, right around the time the first fish and chip shops were being open in London. So let's make some fish and chips. I'm going to start by slicing russet potatoes and place them in cold water to remove the starch. While that's happening, I'm going to salt the cod fillets to draw out moisture and let them sit for a while. Drawing out the moisture will make it stick to the batter better. Helium is the second lightest and second most abundant element in the universe. It's crazy because helium is extremely abundant in the universe, like 23% of what makes up the entire universe, but is super rare on Earth. However, it was the first of the noble gases of group 18 to be identified. Helium was first identified, but not really discovered, during a solar eclipse in 1868 by the use of a spectroscope. A spectroscope allows you to measure the spectrum of light. The ones in the 1800s were fairly simple compared to today's machines. The kind used to discover helium was basically a box with two telescopes sticking out of it, directed towards a prism in the middle of this dark box. One telescope would allow a small amount of light in, and the other telescope was used to analyze the spectrum of the light given off. The the eclipse of 1868 was hypothesized by many scientists across the world, but interestingly enough, the most accurate hypothesis turned out to be from none other than the King of Siam, now Thailand, King Mongkut. He predicted the eclipse would last for six minutes and could be seen in totality across South Asia. King Mongkut is the king from the musical The King and I, if you were wondering, and he was a dedicated champion of arts and scientists in his country. Solar eclipses at this time in the 19th century were always a big deal because it allowed astronomers to observe the outer atmosphere of the sun. So on August 18th, 1868, the eclipse happens. There are scientists from all over the world that had come to witness it. If you look up who discovered helium, it will say Pierre Janssen first observed it, but Humphrey Davy first isolated it almost 30 years later. But that's not really how it went down. For all those studying the eclipse, many noticed this new line of yellow that was similar to, but distinct from the already known line of sodium on the spectrum. The first person who thought that this could represent a new element was a scientist from a British team, Norman Poxon, the director of an observatory in Southeast India. Janssen's contribution is that he realized he could focus his spectroscope directly at the edge of the sun and observe the spectrum at any time not just during an eclipse. But at the same time, there was an astronomer, kind of like an amateur astronomer, back in England, Norman Lockyer. He also figured this out, and Lockyer somehow got his hands on an article from India about the new yellow line on the spectrum. By the way, Norman Lockyer founded the journal Nature, which I get a lot of my information from. Lockyer designed a new spectroscope and decided that, yes, indeed, this was something new. So just out of a weird bit of history, Janssen and Lockyer were credited with the discovery and not popular back in India. And he, like, he definitely got screwed out of the discovery. He later wrote that he had been treated as waste paper. So the dry batter is just all-purpose flour, rice flour, salt and pepper, and a pinch of chili powder. And for the wet batter, I made this last night because it sets better when you let it sit overnight in the fridge. Rice flour and all-purpose flour, a nice lager beer and a couple beaten eggs, and put a couple pinches of Tabasco sauce in there. That's just for me. The history of fish and chips coming to be like the national dish of Britain is a story of the mass movements of peoples and food over the last 500 years. In the 16th and 17th centuries, Jewish refugees from Spain and Portugal brought the idea of fried fish to Britain from the pescado frito recipe of fish fried in flour. Potatoes were domesticated in South America and first brought to Europe in the 1500s, and fries were invented in either Belgium or France, probably in the 1700s, but I think it was in Belgium, Team Belgium. Thomas Jefferson even had fish fried in the Jewish fashion on a trip to Britain. But probably the first real fish and chip shop was opened in 1860 by a Jewish immigrant, Joseph Mollen. 
and it became so popular that fish and chips were some of the only foods not rationed in Britain in World War I and World War II because the authorities thought it might affect their low morale on the population. You know, gotta have their fish and chips. As I said before, helium is 23% of what makes up the universe, and a lot of that is stored up in stars, like our sun. So they were seeing helium emitting from our favorite and only sun, the sun. That's where the name helium comes from, the Greek sun god Helios. Sir William Ramsey, who would end up discovering damn near all the noble gases, discovered and isolated helium for the first time by using electrolysis before it was used for hair removal. He was able to isolate not only helium, but all of the other naturally occurring noble gases, argon, neon, xenon, krypton, and radon, and was the first to see that helium was actually found on Earth. Today, Helium is used in the production of computer hard drives, microscopes, and airbags, and of course, you know, birthday party balloons. So you sound like an Oompa Loompa. But we are running out of helium here on Earth. Helium found on Earth is the product of millions of years of radioactive degradation of elements like uranium and thorium. So helium is collected out of pockets of natural gas. However, helium doesn't fuse with any other element, and it is incredibly light. So once it's released, it quickly filters through Earth's atmosphere and into space, then it's gone. It's the only completely non-renewable element on Earth. Tartar sauce, super easy. It's just a mix of mayonnaise and sweet relish. It's delicious. Thank you, and see you next time.